Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, another episode of the Spirit Channel. As always, I'm your host and today my lovely special guest is the lovely and delightful Donna Tyson. Donna is the founder of Vibrant Living International. It's a non-profit organisation which helps people live their fullest potential. Donna is a public speaker, a life and health coach and an ordained minister and podcast host and she's been in this business for over 25 years. Donna, very, very welcome to the show. My pleasure. Um, I'm really delighted to, to have you on. You seem to be such a, a sunny person and I'm hoping you can lift some of the gloom that's currently surrounding <laughs> me today. Um, you, you have a lovely, vibrant background there and a lovely, sunny background. Um, we were just kind of chatting before uh, we started there about about that. Um, I'm uh, I'm just recovering from COVID here, so uh, you're my first interview. Um, while I've had that there, so yeah, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that you you kind of lift my spirits a little bit with with your with your delightful smile. <laughs> well, I will do my best to do so. I had COVID in December, so I understand and hope you are feeling better thank you so much um wow in december i take it you you had some symptoms and stuff then because i i didn't think that uh that i would have caught it never mind feel this bad with it i was surprised that i got it too and how fatigued and everything that i was as well it took a while to recover yeah absolutely yeah, well, I've, as I said, I've just I've just had the all clear, but uh, I'm no way, shape, or form um, feeling ready to, to venture out into the real yeah. world. So yeah, excuse me if my voice sounds a, a little off. So Donna, um, tell us a little bit about Vibrant Living International. Um, how long has that been going now? How long have you created that? Because I know that you've mentioned that you've over twenty five years, and has Vibrant Living International been going for over twenty five years, or is that something that you created later on in your journey? It's something I created later on in my journey. I have been involved in a lot of different organizations with speaking and coaching. Mentoring would be another word we would use. Um, Vibrant Living started about 10 years ago. Okay, lovely. And what exactly is Vibrant Living International? Obviously, I've checked it out and I'm hoping other people will, but what would you say it, well, it is or... Hi. Vibrant Living's passion is to help people to rise above the pain and disappointment of life so they can be who they were created to be and live a life of ease, live a life they love with confidence. Lovely. Um, so you say that, um, or you mentioned that you're an ordained minister and um, obviously this has grown out of this, I'm assuming as part of your... Um, part of your mission or part of your, your duties as an ordained minister would be offering advice and offering help to people who would have um, sought you out and looking for, for something. So I guess maybe the transition in, into doing this here would have been, wouldn't have been that massive a shift. But what made you change from wanting to be a minister and helping people there into, into doing something like, like this here? I became a minister after I had started Vibrant Living. All right. So it grew out of me launching this ministry to be able to help people. And so my mission is not to be what you might traditionally think a minister is. My, the call, I believe my mission in life is to help people find their true identity and all the things that are available to them that they may not be aware of. And how would you, um, what are some of the things that, that you do? Because you mentioned coaching and um, public speaking and stuff like that. So how does someone approach you and, you know, ask you for, for your help? One of the main ways people come to me is through my free workshops. And so that's an avenue where people can get in touch with the message and the skills and tools that I provide for people. I also have um, some free books that are available to help people. Um, my podcast is another avenue. So everything that I do is a lot of giving to be able to help people. And then from there, if they feel like that they need more support 
and want to learn more about the programs I offer, then we would have a consultation and find out if they're a good fit for my programs. Okay, and all of your work outside of maybe just publishing your few few books, it's it's pretty much all for for, for free anyway. The, it's not, yes, not it for is. profit. Yeah, that's obviously a fantastic um, fantastic service that you offer. Um, and, and to be doing this here for for over twenty years, over twenty five years, would you say that um, would you say that it's something that you've fallen more in love with, or perhaps you feel that maybe you just want to slow down a bit? I guess maybe starting up and um, feeling that uh, you really can be a service and helping people. You have that fiery passion. I'm just wondering now, twenty twenty five years, has has maybe <laughs> some of that passion that you, you originally came into this maybe slow down a little bit or perhaps did you feel it, it looked different at different times in my life but i was always the girl that people were coming and talking to and they would say things like i can't believe i'm telling you this i've never told anyone this i was always that girl so constantly throughout my life as i raised my children and and went on with different businesses that my husband and i have had i have continually improved and learned how to do what I was naturally gifted at even better. And 10 years ago, I lost a job that was, I thought was going to be my dream job where I was going to be able to do that passion thing in my heart. It didn't work out. And so I went back to school and that's when I have really intensified my education on how to do this. My kids are grown. I have more time to really put into it. So I've learned how to do what I was naturally gifted at with it at high level. So transformation happens quickly for the women and men I work with. All right, all right. Yeah, you mentioned there that um, obviously besides losing the job, is it, you know, I think what's brought you to, to this point in your life was, was the, 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 the younger life that you had. Um, you mentioned you grew up in a large family and moved a lot and you became a mom as a teenager. Could you talk about some of the um, emotions and, and, and thought patterns that you would have had and, and beliefs that you would have had around <laughs> yourself at that time? Because I, I do know that um, we, we, we have this, uh, I guess society fosters, fosters it on us about what way we should be and you know how we should be living and stuff like that. And if we're not living in, in, in the way that potentially we think that society says we should be living then we can't have those very negative emotions we absolutely can have negative emotions as you had mentioned i was a teenage mom and all of the embarrassment the shame the pain the fear uh anger resentment all of those things were going on and the main belief that you mentioned that was an issue was is i believe that somehow i wasn't good enough and when we believe that we're not good enough it it's it's a core belief it affects all of our choices it affects the success level we have our relationships and so learning how to discover who we really are and one of the things that I, I teach when I talk about being enough is I was created to be Donna with all of my quirks and all of my things. I was created to be Donna. I'm only not enough if I try to be you or somebody else. It's like comparing a rose to a tulip, to a daisy. They're all unique, all beautiful, but they can't compare to each other. There weren't supposed to compare. So one of the things that I've learned is comparison kills. We need to stop it and just be the best me and you we can be. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a message that I try to strive to, um, to get out there too. And, and obviously to bring more into my own life is that we are good enough. You know, it's, it's only when we, and start comparing ourselves to other people and um, other people's lives that we feel inadequate and stuff like that. As you say, we're all mm -hmm. created different, we're all created unique, but we're all exactly the same and we're all beautiful people inside of some of them. How would you say that, um, I mean, obviously this has come back 20 odd years, 25 years, if not more, probably a lot longer. How would you say that, um, you mentioned back then that, you know, being a teenage mom and all of the 
the negative emotions that would have came to you and potentially that you would have had on yourself. Would you say it's a lot harder now um, in, in, in the current day and age to be a teenage mom or... Oh, we've lost the connection. Nine. Um, for anyone who's just rejoined us, sorry we had a um, bit of technical difficulty. My um, Wi-Fi went down and we had to cancel the interview. So we're going to kind of pick up where, where we kind of left off. And um, no, you are not going mad and you're not hallucinating. Yes, it's a different perspective and um, it's a different kind of look um, because this is recorded at a later date. But... Anyway, Donna, I was just about to ask you, because we were talking about your early life as, as a mom, as a teenager, those kind of emotions that you'd felt back then of hopelessness, shame, doubt, fear. And obviously this has come back, um, if you don't mind me saying, yeah, maybe quarter of a century, if not more ago. Um, what I'm kind of wondering is um, whether you've worked with, with um, teenagers nowadays that have become moms, and do you think, based on your own experiences, that there is more help today um, with people like you, coaches, support being in place to help um, anyone who is a teenage mom? Or do you think that there, there really is pretty much the same? Uh, I don't really know that I can answer that fully about the resources that are available today because I don't work with teenage moms per se but there are a lot of resources that are available today and i'm not sure how much was really available when it happened to me there was um a different it was a different time and um i wasn't aware of what was available yeah so um i i appreciate that i was just maybe kind of wondering if you'd had any kind of thoughts on it um regardless of whether you worked with anyone or not but i guess it's just different um uh, just different times that we're living in. I suppose each time has its own unique challenges and stuff like that. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, now, I know you have a number of ebooks out as well. Um, I actually had the, the privilege of, of getting to read one before we started this interview. Um, you have um, The Key to a Wonderful Life, um, A Wonderful Sleep, Three Tools to Break the Cycle of Anxiety, and From Frazzled to Freedom. Um, I, I just kind of wondering what was your, your thought processes about releasing these in, in addition to, to what you certainly um, already contribute. I have read from Frazzle to Freedom and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It wasn't too long. It was full of helpful tips. Unfortunately, when I went to get the little presents, they were no longer there for me. <laughs> well, that's something I should probably check on. But the book that book was released about four year, three years ago, I think. Um, but I could have to check on those hyperlinks that's in that as well to make sure that they're not available, but you might not have wanted them anyway. <laughs> you never know. I, I took the time to actually purchase and read it. So uh, I was looking yeah. forward to my free gift, but yeah, just tell me about your, your thought processes about releasing these, you know, um, at what point did you say, well, it would be good to potentially put down the tools and the tips that I have already maybe into a more kind of public format for people that wouldn't necessarily come to me for coaching, for advice. They can certainly purchase my book um, and maybe, you know, help themselves in that regard. What is your thought processes around that? I wanted to make resources available to help people at whatever stage they may find themselves on a self-help improvement journey. There are different ways and, and steps we are along the path before we can fully say yes to working with a coach. And so it's resources that are available just to help people along their journey. Okay, brilliant. And um, obviously people come to you um, when they're uh, already dying, already kind of beaten, um, not too sure of, the, of their life, uh, looking for, for coaching, looking for mentorship, looking for um, direction in life. Um, one of the, the, the themes that, that I would deal with, and I think that um, from listening to a few of your podcasts, is the idea of trauma in our life. Um, and I would say that trauma is, is kind of the great learner. If we can understand um, what it is that trauma is trying to teach us or um, that, that, that necess not necessarily that um, we, we shouldn't be um, 
uh, what's what's the kind of words I'm looking for, that kind of language. We shouldn't just uh, let this uh, make us feel small. That that um, that's that's it, kind of it for us. We can we can learn and we can grow from trauma. I'm just wondering about your thoughts around that. Trauma is stuff that happens to us. It's not something wrong with us. And that in itself is something to remember when you are processing things that happen to us. And my thoughts around being able to recognize that there could be something good come out of these situations is a big shift for our mind. I call it, I call it gifts wrapped in sandpaper that they rub us the wrong way. They're not always fun. They're not always anything that good. And sometimes it takes a while to see the gift and begin to find it. But that shift helps me to process and helps me to move through situations that we encounter. Okay. And um, obviously you, you've encountered a number of traumas yourself. And I guess uh, this is how you're able to um, help other people through their traumas, through your experiences. Um, I want to talk about um, your your workshops um, that you've got. I know that you currently have three workshops and the first of them is entitled Turn Your Baggage Into Luggage Workshop. This is predominantly for women who want to, to move past the junk in their lives. Could you talk a little bit about um, what happens in, in this kind of workshop and what methodologies you, you would employ and techniques? This is a live interactive workshop where I share four pillars to be able to move through from baggage thinking to luggage thinking, and then actually create the life I love. It is a virtual event. And so you can attend wherever you are and there is a workbook. So it is very hands-on and interactive. Okay. And this is just obviously for um, quite a lot of your work is for pe women who, who want to move past the jump in their life. And that could be, I guess, relationships or, um, uh, 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 traumas, whether, whether it's maybe um, becoming a mom or um, a, a breakup in a marriage and stuff like that, just kind of anything really open to, to women who want to move on beyond yeah. those situations in their lives? The way I word it is pain and disappointments in your life it can be big things in your mind or little things. But anything that you feel like is still holding you back or you're still feeling pain and discomfort about. Okay, lovely. And your second one then is life by design. And in this one, you talk about the, the 12 laws of spirit and, and, and five, is that? Five human superpowers? Yes. Okay, let, give us a little bit about this. I'm just trying to work out what... Um, what actually happens in each kind of workshop, what's different about them, you know, for anyone who's listening to this here, anyone who's watching, you know, if, if maybe the, the first one doesn't sound as if it would be theirs, maybe the second one. So if you could just kind of talk about what type of, um, what would happen in that kind of workshop, what kind of 12 laws, obviously you don't want to give up your, your secrets here, but sort of a, just sort of a, a brief synopsis or a summary of what the 12 laws of spirit and these super, super human parts maybe this particular workshop is for people who have processed if they've had pain in their life they've processed it and they just want more they want to continue to grow they want to continue to go for their dreams they want to learn more and be able to grow in those areas of their life that's what life by design not by default if we wait a year from now we'll be a year older and either we can purposefully live that year or it'll just happen. It'll just happen to us. So learning how to use superpower gifts that we have, like imagination, intuition, and others, and then the laws of the spirit that are in place, which all of these things are working all the time. But if we don't know how to use them properly, sometimes they just don't work for our benefit. Yeah. I use an example of using a knife incorrectly. A knife is supposed to say cut an apple. But if I turn the knife the wrong way, it cuts me. And I get mad at the knife. Like, why didn't you work? 
And so learning how to actually use these gifts and, and laws for our benefit is what this workshop is about. If you think about the one I mentioned, imagination, everybody knows that we have one, but we don't often realize that we use it in the negative or to think about what we fear more than what we want. And so that in itself is using imagination in a way that doesn't bring the results that we really want in our life because we do attract whatever we continue to expect and think about. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Some of the things that you mentioned are magnetically attracting that which you desire, the confidence of, of speaking up for yourself and choosing to think positive, think of joy instead of negativity. And to some people, this might seem superficially and to be based upon the law of attraction, but um, I guess that's one kind of law. And you mentioned 12 laws. So for me, um, I think we had this conversation before, is that um, I think this is why the law of attraction doesn't quite work out for most people because they're only choosing to, to use one of these laws instead of the, the 12 laws that you mentioned. That is true. They all work in harmony together. One of the previous conversations when this didn't go the way we thought it would, we were talking about people who wanted to get wealthy and they are using um, maybe not integrity in their, in their behavior, thinking they're going to attract wealth because they're just thinking about it. But it's working in harmony with their motives of their heart as well. And we can't have, I can't want to take advantage of you and think I'm going to benefit. It has to be mutually. And so there's a whole lot of other laws and things that are in place to help us actually take care of each other, mutually benefit from the transaction, if you will, and be able to have the desires and dreams I, that I want. Lovely. You mentioned um, the heart there, and that's something that I... Um... It's kind of fundamental to, to the things that I like to talk about. And for me, I guess, the heart and choosing to, to live a heart-based life um, is fundamental to, to all of this, it's fundamental to growth, to um, overcoming anxiety, overcoming trauma and stuff like this. And I guess it would probably be one of the fundamental laws of spirit of if you have your heart in the right place, then you, you're no longer thinking just of yourself. And you're no longer being angry, potentially. You're no longer um, finding it hard to forgive. Um, there's so much that we could talk about about heart, but um, it would probably be best for, for another podcast. I just want your thoughts on, on that. The motives of the heart are displayed by the thoughts we think and the actions we take. And it, it whatever you, let's put it this way, whatever you sow, you reap. And if my motivation is not pure, then I'm going to reap that in my rewards at some place along the way. So learning to really understand why I want what I want and how it can benefit mankind as well as my own life. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and just your, your, third, um, your third workshop is called Vibrant Women Community. This is a, a safe place for, um, for current women and uh, for helping women to rise above the disappointments of the past. Um, this is a Facebook group. Could you give some insight into that? It is a private Facebook group that people can request to join. It's a safe place for women to rise above what's happened to us. It's full of all kinds of resources. Um, to be able to help them overcome what may be going on in their life. Okay, brilliant. The, the, <laughs> the next thing I kind of want to talk about is um, something that I have found uh, to be fairly relevant as, as in my life is the more that I've kind of went on and tried to, to be more of service to people is the power of saying no, that you mentioned this here. And I guess this is, uh, this is the, the mistaken belief that we um, need to try and um, offer our service in whichever way possible to whoever possible. We try to please everyone and we end up um, potentially not pleasing anyone. Sometimes we need to cut back and learn to say no to people so that we can focus on things that are potentially more productive and helpful. 
Could you talk about that? I call it honoring our yes and our no's. And learn the first step is to find out what's really important to me. Actually write it down. These are the areas that are most important to me at the place I am in my journey. I like to do five of them. And so looking at your schedule, your diary, your calendar, and looking to see if those items actually make it into your calendar, your diary. If they're not there, then what do I need to say no to? For example, if I say yes to something, having the revelation that also means I am saying no to something. So if I am saying yes to everything, for me, when I was learning all of this, I was actually saying no to taking care of myself because I was trying to take care of everyone else so I didn't get taken care of. And so learning to be able to realize when, when you're asked to do something, if I say yes to this, what will I be saying no to? Fantastic. That's, that's obviously the, the better than what way, what way I had originally put it. It's, it explains it a lot better. Yeah, um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, you're, you have another course called the, the Choose Joy course, and that is a, is a mental dad. We think about our physical dad and about the foods that we eat. Um, we don't eat the right foods. We're going to end up feeling um, bloated, ill. Um, all kind of manner of discomforts, and this is obviously uh, you would equate this with your with your mental dad. Um, the way you think equates to your quality of life. Um, and in this here, you say it's a workshop of kicking fear to the curb. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Learning that I first of all get to choose what I continue to think about. When we're in the middle of fear and anxiety, it does feel like we don't have a choice. And there are moments that it just feels overwhelming. But when I actually realize that I do get to choose what I continue to think about, and if I choose what I actually want, I can prevent the fearful moments. And so beginning to realize that whatever I think about is going to produce results. I, another way to say it is whatever I focus on, I'm going to empower or magnify. I use the analogy, I've been married quite a few years. And if I focus on whatever my husband does that bugs me and he's gone to work and by the time he gets home, I've been thinking about all the things that bug me and that he didn't do or whatever. When he walks in the door, I'm angry. He doesn't know why I'm angry, but I'm angry. And we don't have a great evening because I'm irritated all day long because I've been focusing on those little irritating things. But if something irritates me and I remember all the things he does, I love and admire and all of the things he does special for me. He comes home that evening. We have a completely different evening. And it's all because where I chose to put my focus, he didn't do anything different. It was all my choice and my thinking. Making that, sense? That, that makes perfect sense. And um, I hope that people who are listening to this here really do understand the, the, the value of this here because it makes absolute sense. And I think that a lot of uh, relationship um, breakdowns, a lot of relationship um, arguments could be quite solved by, by using your advice. It's, it really is. Um, it's so simple, but yet it's so um, vitally important and we, we generally don't do it enough. I'm guilty of it myself, so I'll be definitely taking this advice on board. Um, what you, We've obviously talked about three different types of workshops um, and obviously in this type of program. I'm just kind of wondering, um, you would probably have different types of people who would come to your different workshops and I'm just wondering would you would you sometimes see maybe people in the in the same workshops or would you would you, would people come and ask can they take part in the, in the, in different workshops or and um, would you say well um, well you're in one workshop and this is like a six month um, long workshop so we need to really sort of complete that before we we, we, we tend to see, you know get you in or does that make any sense yeah, the workshops are different than my coaching programs. So the, the 
workshops that you're talking about is a one-time event that people can come and learn and glean from. And then my coaching programs, which are in a, a, a different thing for that, from that, those go for a period of time, each of them a little different. The first step is to have a consultation so that we can see which program would be the best fit for you. And if for some reason my programs are not, finding the resources that would be the best benefit for you. And then we would go from there. Brilliant, fantastic. And you have so much, um, it's almost overwhelming, the amount of um, advice and tips and workshops and you know, posts and stuff like that that's, that's, on, your, that's on your website. It really is um, something you could spend a good day on um, getting, getting to around it and getting to know it and stuff like that. Um, one of the things you mentioned is your confident life. Um, this is living a life of limitation because of what you think of yourself. And this may kind of, uh, we may have kind of talked about this already, but um, I'm wondering what you have maybe could elaborate on that or give us any more thoughts on that. It's just learning how to have a confident life and be able to work from that. But all of these different programs, you're right, can be like, oh my God, I don't even know where to start because there's so much stuff is, is just remember the first thing is take a look at all of the resources that are available, but just schedule a phone call with me. Yeah. And then we can help you decipher what's really going on in your life. You will walk away with clarity and steps of what to do next after that conversation. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just about to say that. I think for anyone who's, who's a bit overwhelmed by going to your website, it's just pick up the phone, drop you an email, and uh, you can work out exactly what's needed and where they need to be situated and put into. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I, like me, I also read that uh, you enjoy long walks in nature. Um, and I would imagine that given the nature of your work and a lot of the trauma that you come up against, that this is your way to to detox and to, to sort of cleanse your own sort of self. Um, that works for me. I would call walks in nature a, a, a detox from the, the, uh, again, the, the, the environment that, that we currently um, reside in and, and all the, the kind of problems and, and stuff like that. And I'm just wondering, um, is there anything in particular that, that you like about your walks? Is there anywhere that, um, is it a beach? Is it a mountain? Is it just sitting on a bench? Is it the sunshine? <laughs> it could be any of those or all of them, depending upon where I am. I don't really live near mountains, but I do enjoy mountains and the forest and sitting beside water. Um, all of those kind of things are where I feel connected to God. It is peaceful and restorative to my soul. Yeah, absolutely. I always say that... Um, Nature, it sounds silly, but nature is natural um, and our kind of man-made world is unnatural. And getting back to nature reminds us of our, uh, I guess, our spiritual roots. It allows us to reconnect with, with nature, which is an extension of God. For me, um, I don't know about you, but I kind of like to be on my own um, in nature. Um, when I don't mind company, I prefer to kind of be on my own so that I can collect my own thoughts. Um, Sometimes I'll stop and maybe take a seat somewhere and just kind of people watch. But generally, I, I, I'm kind of a lonesome person, um, probably because I, I do so much talking the rest of the time. And I'm just wondering, is that something that you can relate to? What need, feeling and, and wanting this need to be on your own? Yes, I love my alone time. I also like to do things with my husband, but I do need time away from him as well. <laughs> I'm not telling you said that. Um, uh, you can, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. <laughs> okay, well, look, thanks very much, Donna. Uh, let us know, have you any plans for the future? Um, have you any plans to extend or um, perhaps do, I don't know, some sort of, well, you mentioned these workshops. Are you saying I'm not doing enough? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're absolutely doing enough. I'm just... Given the amount of stuff that you do, I think it would be very hard for, for you to, to, to just kind of stay static at the end of the day. Um, I do have, uh, I can't imagine that you would want to, you have more ideas in your head and more ideas of which way you want to be a service and, and, and potentially increasing that service. So let us know what's going on inside that head. <laughs> 
right now, what I'm really focusing on is simplifying. And the thought I have for this particular year is to go deeper, not wider. And so I'm really going deeper into my two primary programs that turn your baggage into luggage and life by design, not by default. And those are my primary focus over the next year. Okay, thank you very much for that. So I kind of like to leave people um, or ask people, have you got one sort of message, one sort of key philosophy um, based on all your years of, of, of doing this here? Um, based on all your experiences, is there one kind of key message, one kind of key philosophy that you could sum up and just give to the viewers and give to the listeners? Hmm. I don't know if there's one particular message other than what I call my podcast is that you were designed for greatness. You are amazing and you are loved. And don't try to compare yourself to anyone else. Just be the best you you can be. Absolutely beautiful, fantastic. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I guess uh, the first step is just to get in contact with you. Yes. Fantastic. So then um, coming on, on the coattails of that, where then can people find you if they're interested in this, if they're interested in connecting with you, interested in your coaching, your, your ebooks, your, your, your website? My website address is the letter I, vibrantliving.com. Okay, have you any other social media links? Um, I know you're on YouTube. I am on all of the different social media platforms except for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but you can find me there. My name is unusual, and I believe you have all those links I shared I with my bio. I do indeed. I'll, I'll include them in the blurb, so I will. Donna, thank you very, very much. Um, I would, one thing I, I guess you did miss out on um, is your patience. Um, it seems to be a very underused commodity. I would say that uh, patience is certainly a virtue, and when God was giving it out, I think he gave you enough for about three people because this podcast has had its uh, ups and downs and I, I am sitting here with my fingers and toes crossed that um, I will not have to call on you again to, to reschedule. So thank you so, so much for agreeing to do this here. You've uh, you've certainly cheered me up a lot and brought a lot of sunniness into my life. And I do hope that people do avail of your, your brilliant coaching and do pick up the phone for you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.